What's up YouTube, it's Matthew here and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you all on how to talk to sellers, the very best way to talk to sellers in your wholesaling real estate business. Before we go on, be sure to like this video, subscribe, turn on post notification bell and comment down below. Before we go on, be sure to like this video. By liking this video, this channel grows, it becomes more discoverable on the YouTube algorithm and all that jazz. And comment down below on how your wholesaling business is doing and if you have any questions, concerns or recommendations for videos uh, that I should post. Now, just to give a quick update on how my journey is going, I recently closed a deal last week that I'm going to post probably later this month for you all. Um, I've been reading uh, business books, um, just 10 pages a day throughout the week um, since July. Actually, it's been really beneficial for my mindset and just my business. So right now I'm reading The Richest Man in Babylon. It's been recommended by so many entrepreneurs and people in wholesaling real estate. It's a book just about uh, tips from the richest man in Babylon on how to grow wealth and how to grow wealth that sustains for a lifetime, for generations. And it's older English, but the advice that he gives in the story is very practical and you can apply it right now in your life today. So, The Richest Man in Babylon by George Clayson. Clayson. Um, so how to talk to sellers. So one thing I've been learning recently in this business is to match uh, the tonality between the seller and yours. So if you have a personality that is straight to the point, um, you know, they don't want any rapport building, all this buttery sunshine things, you have to give them what they're asking. You have to be that way. You have to mirror their demeanor in this business. So. I'm going to give just a few examples of some recent cold calls that I've done. So what I've been doing is just doing driving for dollars and then like those houses that are really run down or I see that it's completely vacant. Those are the ones I take a snapshot of that picture and then I call them. There's other ones that I just send mail to that, you know, looks decent, but um, they're not as run down as the other ones. So I recently had a, a cold call with this um, gentleman. He actually has two houses that that's vacant. Um, but we were talking about one of them and he was just complaining how he's been receiving so many letters and you know, that was like the second and third person who called him and you know, I just reassured him, Hey, this is my first time contacting you. I haven't sent any mailers yet to him. So I told him that and I was saying, Hey, you know, this is your business. You're a businessman. You want, um, your time to be respected and other things like that. So I'm mirroring. Um, his demeanor where, you know, he doesn't play any games. He wants to feel like he's in control. So I let him, I, I let him feel that way. He talked, he was saying like, oh, you know, these are my properties. I don't have to sell them if I don't want. And I just said, hey, you're in control. You own these properties. And I'm just like repeating to him what he's saying. Um, and, and in a way that is building rapport, but not on the rapport building that we commonly think of as like, Oh, you're from New York. I'm f I visited New York, you know, it's just like, Hey, I understand you. I hear where you're at. Uh, this is what I'm providing. I, there's no commitment. I'm not pushing you to do that or anything like that. Um, but this is what I provide. And then we just went on with the talk. He was talking about a property and he's looking to sell. It's been vacant for three, four years, but the power and water has been on. Um, he didn't really have a price for that one and and so he was keep on telling me hey just call me back later when you get the price drive by and i was like you know i already drove by i can look up numbers real quick uh, what were you looking for for the property and he said he didn't he didn't know right he says that um, the house arv is probably 140. he said um he was thinking around a hundred thousand. I was like, but he kept on telling me to, you know, just look it up, you know, you let me know. And usually in that moment, I would stay on the phone with that person because I don't want to ever leave a conversation so soon, but I was just sensing that he wanted a little bit of time to just think and wanted assurance that, hey, this guy is actually researching my property and, and looking on, on the data. So I actually said, hey, okay, Give me 10 minutes. I'm going to run the numbers, look up the data, talk to my partners about this deal and see what offer I come up uh, with. Is that okay? Do you mind if I call you back in 10 minutes? Boom. 
And you know, I was a little hesitant because like sellers can do that and not answer the phone when you call them back. But I actually called back in exactly 10 minutes. And he answered and I, you know, we went on talking and I was like, hey, you know, this was the appraisal value. I know you're kind of thinking this, um, but you know, we're buying it as is. It's been vacant for three, four years. I don't know what I'm getting into exactly, but I'll be at $70,000, which is about 50% of ARV that I can hold sell for, you know, around like 80 or 85. Uh, and he was like, he, you know, he, and I just stayed quiet and he didn't really respond with a negative answer. There was another house, the ARV was probably 200 and I offered him a hundred thousand and he got so upset and, but like he stayed on the line with me. So I was like, okay. Um, and yeah, so I was like, okay, okay, let's just concentrate on this house. So I went back to the house that he wasn't upset at and I just calmly say, okay, this is the address, let's concentrate on this one because he was kind of still red and hot about one address that I gave him a low ball offer, but I, I think it was a fair offer. And so I, I shifted the conversation over to that property. And that just really helped, it, it helped me actually con control the conversation, but I also wanted him to feel like he's in control all the time saying, hey, you're in control, you own these houses, you don't have to sell them even though I'm guiding the conversation and in a way controlling the conversation. I say, hey, you know, that's my, that's my number. Is that something you can possibly consider? He actually said yes. Um, and then I was like, okay, let's meet on Monday at 10 a.m. He was like, okay, okay. Yeah, I'll have to talk to my daughter with it around the weekend. And, I, I, you know, if anything changes, I'll let you know. But for right now, yes, Monday at 10 a.m. So I have an appointment out of that cold call. And so as you know, just learning from that call, I learned to just mirror the demeanor of the seller, number one, and, and don't overreact when someone gets mad at you. Just calmly relax, calmly say, okay, hey, let's concentrate on this, this only. Or or if, let's say it's even one house and you get a super low ball offer and they say, what, what in the world? What the, and start, you know, using languages to say, oh, okay, okay. I wasn't sure where you were at. I mean, I know you were actually for 175, but uh, it's as is condition. Do you know what you'll value it as? You know, if you were an investor in my shoes, how much would you pay for your property? You know, and it, it's just, you know, like you're talking one-on-one -on -one with someone, you know, you don't want to ever, you know, give up yourself right or like rush through a conversation you have to be able to confront well that's why i love this business because it teaches you about out, outside um uh, conversations and how to deal with your friends your family and just social life and dealing with that confrontation when someone tells you something you don't like or rejects something that you you want from them you know and how to navigate that so that's the number one thing right now I've been learning to talking talking with sellers is to number one, mirror their demeanor. And then number two is to stay calm and collective and don't overreact to their overreaction. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for the support. Um, the last video I posted on Tuesday about uh, my friend getting his first wholesale deal. It's doing really well. Um, I appreciate the support on that video. Um, if you all have any questions, tips, and advice, please comment down below or DM me on Instagram at bizmatthew. And let me know if you all like the shirt. I'm thinking about releasing it soon later this month. You know, I have different colorways of that. Um, and yeah, I hope you all stay safe, stay away from the coronavirus, stay clean and all that jazz. Um, and yeah, I don't think it's going to affect wholesaling so much. Maybe, maybe sellers are not going to want appointments, you know, that often because they don't know, they don't want like a stranger coming in, coming in contact with a stranger they don't know type of thing. And yeah, there's, you know, people just overreact to things and you see that with the stock market and other things. So, uh, yeah, just make sure you guys stay safe, wash your hands as they use the bathroom, you know and uh just i blessings on your business wholesaling or real estate in general and i'll catch you all on the next one